What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Detroit Lions defense for 2021. As it looks like Dan Campbell has given us a little bit of insight on what the Lions defense could look like next year, but also a couple of rookie roles. So let's get it started. No, I got a shout out to the uh, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Welcome everybody to a video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, we're talking about the Detroit Lions defense for next season. Now, this is not going to be a full in-depth breakdown of everything. And this is exactly what the Lions defense is going to look like next season. Because there's still a lot of things that we don't know. But we're starting to put some puzzle pieces together. And we're starting to learn about what the defense could look like next season. And uh, there's a couple of diagrams that I put together. A couple of things that I want to show you of how exciting this defense could actually look next season season. So I wanted to go through that with you guys and just kind of show you guys what I'm thinking, what I'm seeing uh, from the Detroit Lions defense based on what Dan Campbell told us. So Dan Campbell was on Sirius XM yesterday and he came out and said this, just our base defense, you know, we are going to run a 3-4 style defense. Now, when you hear that, you're thinking to yourself, oh, wait a minute, 3-4, oh, hold up, 3-4 defense, because the 3-4 defense, we all know three defensive linemen, four linebackers. But you think about how many defensive linemen you have, you're asking yourself, how in the world is that going to work? We have how many defensive linemen, we signed Michael Brockers, we drafted back-to-back -back DTs, and now we're going to run a base 3-4 defense? I'm going to show you a couple things with that. Uh, but the thing with the 3-4 defense is you don't want to get too caught up in necessarily, here's the front alignment, here's what it's got to look like. You have to have these three defensive linemen, these four. It's more about the person that you do have and finding a way to use that okay three four is just a label but it's such a versatile defense that can run so many different things now in the nfl today teams are always changing things up i mean heck even with matt patricia we are two gapping three four that ran four three defense from time to time you mix in a lot of different things base defenses are almost a nickel defense at this point but dan campbell told us that we are going to run a three four style defense so keep in mind he said style okay because there's a lot of different styles to a three four that you can implement but we'll get back to that in a second let's continue with what dan campbell Campbell said. He also talked about Levi, our second round defensive tackle out of Washington, the six foot three, 290 pound defensive tackle that put up some really good numbers. Some people had him as the best defensive tackle in this draft. Campbell stated that you can see Levi playing a four eye or reduced down to a three technique. Now a four eye, I meaning inside, uh, it's inside tackle. So it's basically playing inside of the tackle on the defensive line. And then he also brings up a three technique, which is like the pass rushing specialist position. All right. Which is like the outside guard. Okay. That's, that's the pass rushing specialist position on the defense line that's the Aaron Donald position and then he says and being able to two gap at times control defenders hit the blocks but also take a side and get a field as a pass rusher so obviously he brings up both things there now if you watch Levi in college and obviously I'm going to do a breakdown of him soon but Levi in college played everywhere on the defensive line I mean he could line up everywhere on the defensive line you could think of okay he could go one-on-one -on -one against tackles he could do a lot of different things on the defensive line the versatility there maybe a little bit less in the NFL because it's obviously a different animal when you consider his explosiveness plus his size it gives you a lot of options he brings up being able to two gap at times okay now when you think of three four a lot of times you think of a you know two gapping defense but there can be one gap sides to that and we'll get to it but two gapping basically you're responsible for two gaps instead of one right you have both the gaps you're responsible for both of them so that's kind of more of a clogging not necessarily attacking you know responsibility for a defensive lineman is clogging dancing not that just 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 clogging your gaps controlling defenders hitting blocks and also being told to take a side take a side of an offensive lineman and get a field as a pass rusher and of course he had a touch on Aline McNeil's versatility as well the third round defensive lineman out of NC State now he is a little bit different because while he is versatile a 317 pound defensive lineman that can move you know he's got some explosiveness but played the nose tackle position in a 3-4 defense for NC State now slightly undersized you could say for the nose tackle position at the NFL but again because of his explosiveness he can do a couple of different things just nose tackle doesn't necessarily mean that you're just lined up across the center I mean heck sometimes those guys that play normal nose tackle can get across the guard they can move around so he gives you that as well and the Detroit Lions this offseason I mean they, they went in on the defensive line they really did before they traded for Michael Brockers Brockers who played a five technique uh who started at nose tackle actually played a five technique so we know he can move around we'll talk about him we signed Romeo Quar, which gave us our pass rusher back we still have Trey Flowers and and you have all these guys coming back. You have your Deshaun Hands. You have Austin Bryant. You have Julian O'Quara. You have Jay Sean Cornell. I mean, it's deep. Nick Williams, who got a pay cut. The defensive line is deep. Not to say that everybody will make the team, but it seems deep. So the 3-4 definitely can throw you off. But this is why I want to show you guys a couple of diagrams on why you don't want to get too caught up in the fact that it's a 3-4 defense. And the reason that he says style is so important because there's so many different styles of a 3-4 that it can be implemented. I mean, you could talk about a tight, bare, 
over and you want to focus more on the personnel so when he says three four it's about the personnel that they have and how they feel they can utilize these guys now the great thing about having this depth is that number one we had a lot of injuries last year no one's healthy so that's good but number two guys should stay fresh and stay rotated in but these guys can move around a little bit so now before we get into the diagram that i did put together i want to talk about Derek barnes a little bit as well they bring up the second to last pick Derek barnes out of purdue the off-ball linebacker saying this barnes wants to play middle linebacker position he wants to run the show he's got an old school mentality about him he out to me he wants to be number five i mean how throwback is 55 for an inside backer if you're a middle linebacker and you think three four it's like how do you have a middle linebacker there well he also then does say inside linebacker he's going to be an inside linebacker we're kind of told that by this which is a position that Derek barnes moved to he moved to the off ball linebacker position in 2020 because the year before he was playing the edge rusher position where he had seven and a half sacks and he moved to that spot and he was able to do that and now he's with the detroit lions he's going to keep his uh, college football number and now he's going to look to play that mike role which definitely gives us a lot of insight on what this front seven could look like so let's get let's talk about this a little bit more but also let's get to the let's get to the diagram that way i can kind of show you guys what i'm trying to say well, as i mentioned three four is a very versatile set i mean you could run a lot of different things out of this now i want to show you guys this first now when you're looking at this if you didn't see that three four over one gap in the bottom right you would think to yourself well this looks like a four three defense because it does look like a four three defense a three four is just the personnel that's on the field, not necessarily worrying too much about the front because 3-4 can look just like a 4-3 defense and also implement one gapping scheme. So I think the Lions will do a little bit more next season with Dom Capers to be more of an attacking defense. But I kind of want to show you just a couple of ways that this could look. Now, there's a lot more than this, but I just want to show you the kind of the versatility that a 3-4 can give you and what the Lions could be looking at here. So let's just go through the defensive line. We'll kind of break down what we're looking at here. So all the way on the left here, you have Levi, the second round pick. I just have his name listed just so just to get a representation of who this could be, even though it maybe not. Regardless, this is, you know, 3-4 over one gap. It looks just like a 4-3. It actually has the same responsibilities of a 4-3, but it's still a 3-4 defense. That's just the kind of versatility that a 3-4 can give you. So Levi right here is playing basically the four eye position. This is the inside tackle position, which is what the eye stands for inside so he's playing inside the left tackle spot now other guys that can play this michael brockers is a big one michael brockers would probably start over levi i would bet but michael brockers could also play this position now michael brockers for the rams started at nose tackle when he was there and they moved him out to play the five technique which is across from an offensive tackle so they moved him to there but there is a lot of versatility he's this type of guy that could also play this role that levi is taking up right now because levi being 290 pounds allows him to do that but michael brockers being 305 pounds also allows him to do that but also bump inside as well all these defensive linemen that we have can play a lot of different spots and if you listen to Aaron Glenn you listen to Dan Campbell talk about these guys they always talk about how we could reduce them down do this we do that with him that's what most of these guys can do next to him you have Aline McNeil now Aline McNeil is playing the nose tackle position but what you notice is he's not straight across from the you know the center here I did this to kind of represent you know what he's doing but he's really taking the right he's really shading to the right side of the center in this situation another guy that can play this role is John Penasini I think one thing that playing a 3-4 allows you to do it allows you to keep guys like Penasini like Jelani to buy involved in the defense and carve out a role for them doesn't mean they're going to be starters but it means that they're going to have a role and they won't be just you know simply wasted okay it won't be just a waste of a draft pick so it allows them to continue to be involved in defense which is great next to that you have trey flowers all the way over here on the right Trey flowers in this situation he is playing the three technique okay outside the right guard this is the spot where it's the pass rushing spot this is the aaron donald position this is the get after the quarterback a lot of guys can play this like i just said dan campbell said that leave I could play this so you could put Levi here this is where the versatility is great you can put Levi here Ali McNeil could probably play this role Michael Brockers could play this role heck Romeo Cora could probably play this role a lot of different guys can play this position as that pass rushing three technique but then next to him because again he's only responsible for one gap from what you can see but then next to him is Romeo Okora who's playing the jack role now the jack role basically being not the strong side because the other side you can see the Sam that's the strong side the jack role being more of the pass rushing specialist many guys can play this position as well including Julian Okora, Austin Bryant. I think those are two guys that could definitely get some ob uh, opportunities here because the Jack roll is usually a slightly undersized uh, defensive end that can get after the quarterback. That's their specialty. They don't drop as often, but they can obviously set the edge. That's what Romeo could do. Now, he may be a little bit bigger in terms of a Jack roll, but you know, it, it doesn't really matter too much, right? I mean, it doesn't matter too much because he's not dropping more that often that deep here. He's just kind of dropping into flats if that's what he has to do. And we know that he can set the edge. He has some athleticism. So, 
Obviously, when you see this on paper, having Trey and Romeo next to each other could be awesome. I mean, that could be amazing in a one-gap defense. Guys that aren't worried about controlling their gaps, but instead just attacking. It's just a situation of one-gap. There's also two-gapping defense, which we'll get into. But that would be really cool. I mean, you can you can understand how much pressure can come from this front four because you have playmakers. And again, there's depth here, right? You could you could slide in Michael Brockers to these roles. You could slide in John Penasini. You could slide in Jay Sean Cornell. A lot of guys, Nick Williams, can play these positions. And then you move back over here, you have... The the Sam roll, which is the strong side linebacker. All right, so basically these two, the Jack roll and the Sam roll, they're both linebackers. They're not uh, defensive ends, okay? These are linebackers. I don't know why I made Jamie Collins yellow, but I did. Uh, but regardless, that's why it's still a 3-4. So as much as it may look like, oh, it looks like a 4-3, it is a 3-4 defense. It's just the label that's put on that. So in this situation, you have Jamie being the Sam roll, which is the strong side linebacker. Now the Sam roll can't, has to be able to rush, but he's going against the tight end. So he's one of those guys that needs to be able to stop the run, needs to be able to take on blockers, needs to have pretty good size, kind of be able to do a lot of different things, drop into coverage, and Jamie can fit that role extremely well because he can do all of those things. Doesn't mean this has to be where you play him, but he can do it all. I can see Jamie being a great fit for this kind of role because he can go up and go up against tight ends when you compare him to some of the other linebackers that we do have. And then you move back to these two inside linebackers. And you can see the first one we have at the Mike linebacker, Derek Barnes. And Campbell said that he would play. He would play that, you know, inside linebacker, Mike linebacker position. So right now, it's Derek Barnes holding that down. Okay, now Derek Barnes, being 240 pounds, uh, Dan Campbell brings up his length as a very big factor, his ability to shed blocks. And what, what he really does well with is attacking. He's a very good attacking middle linebacker that gets after it, gets, down, down, gets downhill, gets after the quarterback, can pass rush. So for him, a one gap right here allows him to get after the quarterback, allows him to come down, fill that gap with these two bigger defensive linemen in front of him. I mean, that's like 600 pounds in front of him to open him up a little bit, but also because of his length and ability to shed blocks, it can allow him to get downhill. And then next to that, you have your will linebacker, the weak side linebacker, because he's not on the same side as the tight end. And this is Alex Anzalone. Now, Alex Anzalone, I don't know if he'll start or not, but Alex Anzalone did start for the Saints. And Alex, the position that he's in right now, it's supposed to kind of free him up. As you can see from a guy right here, Derek Barnes, he can take both of these options, right? He can go both way. But the, the goal is here is to make it so that the weak side linebacker is more free. You don't want him taking on blockers as often in this kind of defensive set. And that would be perfect for Alex because he struggles against the run, uh, shedding blockers, things like that. That's the strength of Derek Barnes, as opposed to Alex Anzalone, who struggles with that. He's better in pass coverage. So this is one of those spots where he can drop out in coverage. He can fly out in coverage because he is able to be free playing this wheel side linebacker. But you could just see by this how many different things the Lions can do, but also how the Lions can get these pass rushers, all these defensive linemen on the field at the same time. Because we kind of do have a lot of weird tweeners in a way. Austin Bryant, Julian Okwara, not necessarily Romeo because he can just play defensive end, but if you're in a 3-4 look, he could play that role. We have tweeners like that, and they're not really linebackers, but they're also not necessarily defensive ends. Austin Bryant hasn't done anything going against offensive tackles, but this could allow him to play more in space, as you can see like Romeo is, and it could make him more productive when he rotates in. I want to show you guys one more example here. This next one is a little bit different. This is against a spread. This is a two-gapping 3-4. All right, a little bit different look. Kind of the same thing. I went with the three same guys here just to kind of show you where the rookies could play. But again, Michael Brockers, like he said, he played the five technique. So this is exactly what Michael Brockers did is this kind of role. He could two-gap and he could play this technique. But again, this could be someone else. I mean, you could probably put Romeo there if you wanted to because he's done that. He did it last year. Then you have Aline McNeil. This could also be John Penasini. Uh, this could be Nick Williams, whoever, depending on the down. Then you got Trey Flowers. Again, it could be multiple players here. They're two gapping, right? They're responsible for both of these gaps. Still a 3-4 defense. Looks much different, but it's still a 3-4 defense. Then you have your Jack linebacker. Now, the reason he's on this side is because you have your tight end over here. Jack linebacker being the weak side linebacker where, you know, there's less personnel. He is the pass rushing linebacker. The Jack side linebacker is the pass rusher. Think of Devon Kennard. That's what Kennard was for the Lions. So, in this situation, I didn't label anybody there. This could be Julian O'Quarr who could play in space. This could be Austin Bryant. Whoever could play that Jack linebacker role can be this guy and can rush after the quarterback in the backfield because the goal is these bigger defensive linemen. See, when you're playing a 3-4-2 gap, you need bigger defensive linemen. And that's what Levi and Aleem, they all bring that to the table, okay? If you're going with 260-pound linemen across the board, it's harder to two-gap. 
But Dan Campbell brings up specifically that McNeil did it because he played nose tackle, perfect role for him, and the fact that Levi can do it as well. So it allows guys like the Jack linebacker to get after the quarterback, be more free, and uh, kind of run things down. And that's where Julian, again, could see opportunities. Now, the weird thing about roles like this is that, okay, you know, certain guys are going to have to be out. So maybe you put Romeo in instead of Levi. You know, you got to figure things out. Maybe you put Romeo at this role. There's just, you just always get, you know, not everybody's going to be able to get on the field if you're in these situations. But at the same time, it allows guys to stay fresh. And uh, you are going to deal with injuries as much as you hate to say it. Then at the linebacker spot, of course, we still have our Will, Alex Anzalone. And then you have your Mike, who's on the strong side. You have Derek Barnes. And then you have the extra defensive back. Now, this isn't a 4-2-5, but it's sort of similar in a way. If the Jack linebacker just goes down against defensive line, it almost looks like the 4-2-5. The extra DB could be Melly. It could be any of those guys. It could be Will Harris. That extra defensive back that slides in. As you can see, this is versus the spread. This is when an offense spreads you out a little bit more. It's more of a passing situation. I don't know why Romeo's name is down here. Just ignore that. But that, that you know, it's more of a bad situation you get that extra defensive back on the field I know it's only two defenses in a 3-4 but I just want to kind of show you how many different ways a 3-4 can be utilized that it's not just hey 3-4 it's just going to look like this the whole time no it can be looked a lot different and it can look like a 4-3 and have the exact same responsibilities as a 4-3 yet it's listed as a 3-4 because it's about personnel not necessarily about not necessarily about what the front looks like. This is a great opportunity for guys like Jelani to buy, for guys like John Penasini to stay involved, not necessarily make them have to change their body type to try to fit in, okay? To buy is definitely built for a 3-4, but the thing is to buy can play all those positions. We've seen to buy play the jack. We've seen him play, uh, we've seen him play the Sam role. We've seen him play the linebacker positions. He can play all the linebacker spots. So it keeps him very involved. Collins can play all the linebacker positions. We know that uh, Derek Barnes can play both because he played edge and then he went back to off ball linebacker. Alex Anzalone's moved around a little bit there, not as much, but he's played on the edge as well if you go watch him back with the Saints. So all these guys can play the different spots. The 3-4 allows them to stay involved in a lot of different positions because you have guys that can play everywhere. Okay, so that's the first benefit of playing a 3-4 style because you can mix in a lot of different defenses and all of the guys that you currently have in your roster already brought in to fit that defense, yet you can get the best out of them because you don't because you have a lot of depth now, you can just put them in different positions. When we hear this, we shouldn't be too shocked because keep in mind, Aaron Glenn his background is a 3-4 defense. As much as they played the 4-2-5 last year and he was the secondary coach with the Saints, he's, his background is a 3-4. That's what he's learned from. Now, we know in coverage that he's kind of already told us you can expect a lot of man coverage. You can expect split safety looks because that's why he brought in Aubrey President. But we do know that his background, a majority of it, is a 3-4 defense. So this is something that he's very well versed in. This is what he knows. He knows the 4-3 as well, but he really knows the 3-4 because that's what he's been through. And it fits what the Lions have already been bringing in personnel-wise in terms of defensive linemen and linebackers. The secondary... It really doesn't matter too much. It really doesn't. 3-4-4-3 four, four, three really doesn't matter too much unless you're striding your strong safety in the box, things like that. But it really doesn't matter too much about what you do there. But I think this gives the Lions a lot of things to do, a lot of opportunities to do a lot of different things. When you first hear 3-4, you're like, wait a minute, why are we doing this? But at the same time, if, if you look at it, there's a lot of different ways a 3-4 can shape. There's so many different ways that you can use a 3-4. And when you have Michael Brockers that can play all over the field, when you have Trey Flowers that can play all over the field, when you have Romeo Quora that can get on the line, get off the line, Julian Okora, Austin Wright, these tweeners, right, that, that can easily play that jack role. And John Penasini, he doesn't have to try to slim down, try to become more of a pass rusher because that's not what he is. He is a run-stopping nose tackle, and that allows him to play these early downs. doesn't give him much flexibility to say, I can play 3-4 DN unless he really changes his body, but he he could play that nose tackle position and rotate in with Aline McNeil uh, rather than having McNeil try to play the whole thing or Penasini try to do the whole thing. Now you got more of a pass rusher who can rotate in. And of course, this is only the base defense. So it doesn't mean that third downs is what we're going to look like. First downs, forward. it just means the base defense, maybe the majority of time, maybe like 35% of your snaps, that's what you're doing. But aside from that, it's always going to change. You're going to mix in 4 2 5, you're going to mix in two defensive linemen. Sometimes you'll get one defensive lineman and you'll just get a whole bunch of pass rushing linebackers. You can mix in a lot of different things. You'll probably see some 5 2 because of all the defensive linemen we have. We'll probably mix in five defensive linemen sets to throw them all in defense line, one gap everywhere, and a lot of linebackers to attack. We're going to see a lot of different schematic looks from the Lions next season. But when Dan Campbell says this, it's not to be alarmed. I mean, it's a, it's a good thing because there's so many things that you could play off. And I kind of just want to try to demonstrate a little bit of that here. We're going to get into our Derek Barnes next because Derek Barnes is next up when we talk about the draft pro players that we brought in. And I'm excited to see some Derek Barnes because uh, I know people have been very excited about watching him. And also the fact that he went from edge to from having eight sacks and then moving to uh, inside linebacker is just outstanding. And obviously Dan Campbell speaking so highly of him. I got to watch this dude. So let me know your thoughts, guys. Well, thank you for watching and I'm out.